Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Rick Douglas. Now to your top 11 stories at 11. The soda fire continues burning eight miles northeast of Jordan Valley, Oregon. This morning, it's at 283,000 acres, and fire managers say they have it 70% contained. That's a significant improvement. But the big issue this morning is the weather. A dry cold front is expected to move through the area later today and bring gusty winds. The winds will increase this afternoon out of the west and then shift northwesterly. Um, we're expecting 15 to 20 mile an hour winds with gusts as high as 30 miles per hour. As far as the smoke from the soda fire, Timish says we probably won't see much of a change. Even though winds are expected, she says there are fires to our north, so the northerly winds will be pushing smoke from them in our direction. Another batch of wildfires in and around Kamii has destroyed dozens of structures and forced mandatory evacuations. The Lawyer Complex fire, also known as the Clearwater Complex, includes four blazes that have scorched upwards of 43,000 acres. More than 740 personnel are working to control those fires, now reported at 15 percent contained. They've consumed 30 homes and 75 outbuildings. In Oregon, the Warm Springs fire has scorched 85 square miles and this morning is about 25 percent contained. Residents were evacuated Friday to a nearby shelter, but were allowed back into their homes yesterday. Meanwhile, a lightning sparked fire near John Day has grown to 60 square miles. And south of Baker City, the state's largest wildfire, the Cornette Windy Ridge Fire, has charred almost 140 square miles. Around the world this weekend, ceremonies marked the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, and it was no different in the Treasure Valley. Yesterday, veterans and their families gathered at the Idaho State Veterans Cemetery to observe what they call Spirit of 45 Day, the men and women representing the living history of World War II. Fewer than 1% of our population now serves in the military, so this is a stark reminder to the American public that freedom is not free, and if you look around this beautiful cemetery, you also see that the price of freedom is very visible here. At one point, there was a fear that the air quality might force a postponement, but the cemetery's elevation made it possible for clean air and clear skies. Idaho State Police say 23-year-old Winter's War Eagle of Garden City was struck and killed on I-84 early Sunday morning. Troopers say War Eagle was driving east and having car trouble. He pulled over to the shoulder and got out of his car to check the engine when he was struck by 28-year-old Patrick Musgrove of Meridian. Musgrove was charged with felony aggravated DUI. Two popular bus routes will now run longer. Valley Regional Transit says the Fairview and State Street buses will offer service on weeknights. Starting tonight, the Fairview route will run until 9.30 p.m. and the State Street route until 10 o'clock. The Nampa Meridian Express will now stop at more park and ride spots. An Indonesian search plane has spotted the wreckage of a passenger plane that went missing yesterday. The twin turboprop was carrying 49 passengers and five crew members. The plane had taken off on a 42-minute journey from New Guinea's capital to the city of Aksabil when it disappeared in bad weather. It's now one of a number of Indonesian airlines barred from flying to the U.S. and Europe because of its poor safety record. Boise's international market came alive Sunday with the sights and sounds of native Mexican culture. The Mexican consulate puts on this event on the third Sunday of every month. The idea is to be both entertaining and informative. We, we're promoting Mexico so people is not Mexican, they can ask us if they want to, they are planning to go to Mexico. Uh, we can give them some information uh, for, for magazines or uh, programs that we have for tourism in Mexico. Well, if you missed Sunday's big fiesta, there will be another one next month and again on every third Sunday through December. The step-granddaughter of actor Morgan Freeman has been found stabbed to death outside her New York apartment. Adina Hines was the granddaughter of Freeman's first wife. The couple divorced back in 1979. Hines was found in the street with multiple stab wounds yesterday morning and was declared dead at Harlem Hospital. Police have charged 30-year-old Lamar Davenport, Hines' boyfriend, with murder. Vice President Joe Biden is still weighing a 2016 presidential run, but his advisors reportedly are urging him to make up his mind. Biden is said to be considering all options, including the toll that a campaign would take on his family.
There's a reported push for him to decide by October 1st, which is the latest he could comfortably jump into the contest. The latest Fox News poll has 10% of voters preferring him for the Democratic nomination. When it comes to rentals, affordable housing is in short supply. The Wall Street Journal reporting that more developers are building luxury apartments because construction costs are about the same, but they can charge a lot more for rent.